In the last video we were talking about the guidance structure of the space elevator. This video is all about the climber. The climber's fundamental purpose is to transport payload into space. Payload could be anything from cargo to human beings. Traditional methods using fuel can only carry a small percentage of their weight as payload. In contrast to rockets, space elevators can use a remote power source because they don't need to reach a minimum escape velocity. The most promising method of transmitting energy to the climber is wirelessly, where electrical current is converted into optical energy and converted back again via solar panels. The Space World Space Elevator games aim at developing this technology further. Once on board, the energy needs to be converted into mechanical work to move the climber. The diagram shows a very standard method of doing so. The energy is converted to mechanical energy by motor and is then transferred via a variety of gears to the roller. The gears can be gearboxes, belts or chain drives. There are losses at all stages which need to be minimized in order to increase efficiency. This is how we came to USEC, because USEC has a great emphasis on efficiency. Now we look into the final stages of the transmission process. The most conventional way of moving the elevator is using some sort of roller arrangement. The rollers need to be able to ascend and descend the climber and support it if it's not in motion. Normally friction is a bad thing, since it opposes movement and therefore decreases efficiency. If, however, the climber is meant to remain stationary, high friction can come in quite handy. Otherwise, the rollers would need to apply a constant holding torque and thus have a negative impact on the energy consumption. Now let's move on to the control system, which we already mentioned in part 1. There it was said that it is necessary to compensate for vibration, but the control system does much more as it is there to control the speed and position of the climber. When living beings are on board the space elevator, it is also necessary to provide them with the necessary favorable living conditions. In the diagram you can see the basic layout of a control circuit. An input is forwarded to the function component and this produces an output. This output is then fed back and compared with the input so that the desired output can be reached. The last major topic is safety, which is of great importance with any system. The space elevator incorporates a lot of subparts that are used in industrial applications, such as gearboxes, motors, etc. For these components, industrial standards are ready in practice to ensure their safety. These subcomponents only need to be adapted to be used in a space elevator. The climber and payload need to be secured to protect those on or around the space elevator. The Japanese space elevator competition focuses on safety. This was a very brief introduction into the climber structure. If you would like this slide, please find a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. Please comment, rate and subscribe.